This week has been a crazy decade. Google quietly crushed every OpenAI model on the market with the release of Gemini 2.5 Pro. Meanwhile, DeepSeek, Tencent, and Quen all released banger Chinese models, but nobody's talking about it. Instead, every eyeball in the tech world right now is hypnotized by OpenAI's brand new GPT-40 image generator, which has transformed the internet into a Ghibli anime cartoon nightmare. This is exactly the AI dystopia that Senpai Miyazaki, creator of the Ghibli Animation Studio, tried to warn us about years ago, when he said, quote, I am utterly disgusted. If you really want to make creepy stuff, you can go ahead and do it. I would never wish to incorporate this technology into my work at all. I strongly feel that this is an insult to life itself. That was years ago, but now this nightmare is in full effect. If you make the mistake of going on Twitter today, you'll find that all your favorite memes have been ruined by GPT-40. In today's video, we'll take a closer look at OpenAI's latest toy, along with a few other awesome tools that just put us one step closer to the singularity. It is March 28th, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. When I read in the newspaper that GPT-40 added an image generator, my expectations were extremely low, especially after the disappointments of Sora and GPT-4.5. However, OpenAI just went out and totally redeemed itself by shipping some actual fire. This tool has allowed me to throw graphic design software like Canva in the garbage, because now I can create infographics and marketing material with near-perfect text rendering. It even produced an almost good comic strip for me, and it can even handle transparency layers unlike most other image generators. But everybody's talking about its ability to transform images into specific art styles. That's pretty cool, but the significant thing here is that it gives us the ability to render our AI girlfriends in ways that were previously impossible possible by maintaining character continuity. Like now I can upgrade her with new poses, new outfits, or even add her to photos of those lonely family dinners. That's impressive, but how does it work? This is closed AI we're talking about, so there's no paper or code to look at, but apparently they use an autoregressive approach instead of diffusion. A diffusion algorithm in models like Stable Diffusion and Midjourney generate an entire image all at once, but GPT-4 takes a different approach, generating the image pixel by pixel from left to right, top to bottom. It almost doesn't even look artificial, but it actually contains a controversial watermark provided by the Coalition for Content Providence and Authenticity. In fact, if you take this image and upload it to the C2PA tool, you can see it was generated by OpenAI, along with a history of any modifications to it. Camera manufacturers and software developers like Adobe are implementing this into their software with the goal of tracking every change that happens to a digital asset like an image. And that, of course, is to keep you safe from misinformation at the expense of your privacy and freedom. And platforms like YouTube and Steam are now requiring people to disclose that they use AI assets in their work. And that brings up a big philosophical question that was first posed by someone with an anime profile picture on the internet. With Slop's Razor, you ask, can you tell it's AI generated by looking at it? If the answer is no, then it's indistinguishable from human work, thus no disclosure is needed. But if you answer yes, then it's visibly Slop, and again, no AI disclosure is needed. C2PA is just deep state bloatware, but I digress. If you're poor, the other thing you need to know about is Gemini 2.5 Pro. This new state-of-the-art model from Google actually slaps. Not only is it arguably just as good for programming as Claude 3.7, with a bigger context window, but it's also better than reasoning models like OpenAI 03, and you can actually use it for free right now instead of paying $200 a month for OpenAI Pro. But the problem for Google is that the Chinese are ruining their plans for world AI dominance. DeepSeek just released version 3.1, and it too slaps. Alibaba released Quen 2.5 Omni, which can see, hear, talk, and write, thanks to its new thinker-talker architecture. Then Tencent released T1 to compete with DeepSeek, and ByteDance, the company behind TikTok, released Dapo, an open-source reinforcement learning system for building large-scale, large language models. We're currently living in a vibe coder's paradise, where anyone can pick up an open-source Chinese model and generate more code than they could ever possibly need. And that means real programmers are going to have a lot of code to fix and refactor. And an awesome tool that can help you review all that code is CodeRabbit, the sponsor of today's video, an AI co-pilot for code reviews that gives you instant feedback on every pull request. Unlike basic linters, it understands your entire code base, so it can catch more subtle issues like bad code style or missing test coverage. Then it will suggest simple one-click fixes to help you get things cleaned up quickly. CodeRabbit keeps learning from your PRs over time, so the more you use it, the smarter it gets. It's 100% free for open source projects, but you can get one month free for your team using the code Fireship with the link below. This has been the Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.